What is going on everybody, Estas here. Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the top couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade here towards the end of May and heading into the month of June in 2019, as well as talking about some that you guys, the viewers, the subscribers, actually shouted out either on Instagram, on Discord, or in the comments section on my YouTube video from this past Friday and typically every single Sunday but in this case Monday since it is Memorial Day weekend and the market was closed today I'm going over my stocks some that you guys ended up shouting out and kind of just giving my insight and my ideas and my thoughts on the market heading for the upcoming week kind of my plan for the upcoming week so if you're a new viewer Potentially consider subscribing if you do enjoy that type of content in a couple of minutes down the road here. Consider subscribing if you do enjoy the way I break things down. If you enjoy what I provide here on YouTube, it would really mean a lot to me. So let's just run into it, guys. Let's just hop right into it. I hope you all had a great Memorial Day weekend if you're from the U.S. I hope you all had a great time. If you had off, if you have spent time with your family, friends, I hope you all had a great time. Me personally, I actually just got back from the shore, from the beach, and it took me five hours. Yes, you heard me right. Five hours to get back home when it typically takes an hour to an hour and a half. And that's absolutely crazy. The traffic was backed up. There was a point where we went literally five miles and it took us two hours to go five miles so you can imagine how bad that bumper to bump to bumper traffic was but anyway hope you all had a great time let's just talk about very quickly the S&P 500 performance from last week before we do get into the meat of today's video so the five day five minute we can see this was the performance from last week we can see the high was at about 2870 the low at at about 2805. So overall, it was a descending week for the S&P 500, but the good thing is we ended up holding that longer term support at around $2,800, which in my opinion, guys, if we do break that support, that's going to be very bad in terms of a technical basis for the S&P 500. And if we're just looking on the longer term chart here, you know, we're in the process right now of making our third uh, lower high. The first one was obviously the all time high. The second one was at about $2,885 and the third one we're currently in the process of making right now as we are trading and trending below the 180 SMA here on the 180 four hour chart. And again, in my opinion, you know, if we get rejected, we break $2,800 to the downside, that's going to be pretty bad on a technical basis for the S&P 500. And if you guys want to see a further breakdown on this, go check out Friday's video or any video from last week. In the beginning of all the videos, I do a market breakdown for that specific day, give my personal thoughts. So if you guys want to see a further in-depth breakdown for each specific day from last week, just go check out the beginning of the videos. Usually the first five, 10 minutes, I'm going over the market and just doing a breakdown and giving my personal Personal thoughts, any big moves, earnings, stocks, moving, stuff like that in the beginning of those videos. But without further ado, guys, I don't want to spend too much time on this. Let's just talk about some stocks that I'm personally watching. And to be honest, guys, you all know this if you've been following me for a while. At this point, I'm being very conservative with the markets. I'm not really looking to swing trade anything as the overall trend of the market is pointing down right now. Now, and all the large caps that I typically swing trade, I'm mostly swing trading larger caps. Again, for all you guys that have been following me, you mostly know that, you know, a lot of the large caps have been selling off and the technicals on them, they're not looking too good. So during time periods like this, when the market's volatile, when, you know, stocks that I typically swing trade aren't looking too great on a technical basis, I'm mostly looking at, you know, these market ETFs that do very well in volatile markets, which kind of gets me into the first one that I'm personally watching this week, which is going to be SQQQ. And SQQQ, this is a 
Again, a leveraged ETF, a leveraged ETF, and it's a 3x leveraged ETF, and this one goes up in price whenever the NASDAQ 100 is going down in price. So pretty much when the markets are red, this is one to play, right? And we saw on the SPX, but if we look here on the NASDAQ very quickly, it seems like we're in the process, again, just like the S&P, of making our third lower high on the NASDAQ. And if we break this key level at about 73 300 and we go down to the next support which is around 100 points lower from where we are now at 7200 you know that's going to open up a lot of margin on SQQQ and for those of you guys that don't know how leveraged ETFs work let's say the Nasdaq goes down 2% right 2% in price the SQQQ ETF is a 3x leveraged ETF, meaning when the NASDAQ's going down 2%, since the SQQQ goes up, you know, when the NASDAQ's going down, it's going to be up 6%, right? Roughly, right? It's literally kind of not exact, it's not exactly. 3x, right? It's not always going to be, you know, if the NASDAQ's down 2%, it's going to be up 6% for the SQQQ, but it's in the same ballpark, right? It might be up 5.5%. 5.8%, maybe 6.1, 6.2. But all you need to know when the markets are selling off, then at the NASDAQ, SQQQ is going up at a three time, uh, 3x rate pretty much. And don't freak out. It did not go up 300% in one day. It was a reverse split, guys. This happens sometimes, especially with these leveraged ETFs that decay over time. And this is one of them. They sometimes split it. They bring the shares or uh, the share price up and that just sometimes happens, right? It just happens sometimes. A lot of people were asking me about this. It happened with DGAS a couple of months ago. People were like, holy crap, it's up a thousand percent. No, it's not. It's just a reverse split. You know, you pretty much just get the same dollar value if you're already holding the, uh, the stock for, in this case, SQQQ. Let's say you had a thousand bucks and they did a split. You'd still have the thousand bucks. You just have a different amount of shares since the share price is different, if that makes any sense to you guys. So SQQQ is the first one that I'm watching. On the flip side, TQQQ is also one that I'm watching in these volatile times that we're in. And if you guys can see the correlation here, it's an inverse correlation. So TQQQ actually follows the market. It goes up when the markets are going up, and specific the NASDAQ 100. So if the NASDAQ is going up 2%, TQQQ is going to be up roughly 6%, right? And this is in case the markets, let's say, go on a rally for the next couple of days. This will be a very, very good ETF to trade where we can capture, you know, 5, 6, 7, 8%, depending on how much the market moves up. And since the NQ, the NASDAQ, typically swings um, in a higher percentage or a lower percentage than the S&P and the Dow, this ETF will do very good. And if you guys haven't noticed, the NASDAQ typically does worse or better in terms of the uh, the overall market in terms of the Dow, right? Let's say we have a red day. Dow is usually down, for example, 1%. S&P might be down 1%. And you may notice the NASDAQ is doing worse out of the three, maybe down 2%, right? We noticed that because tech stocks, which are a heavy weighting in the NASDAQ, they do poorly sometimes when the markets drop, which end up dropping the uh, which, which ends up dropping the NQ in general, and it makes it do worse than the other two indexes, right? That's kind of my understanding in terms of that. So those are two that I'm definitely watching this week: TQQQ and SQQQ. The third one that I'm personally watching, guys, is MMM 3M Company. This is one that I actually made a video on last week. <coughs> I forget exactly what I titled it, but... I made it last week. It was about a nine minute long video breaking down my thoughts on 3M. And on 3M right now, this is a stock, a very big large cap company. It's been around for many, 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 many years at this point. That's gotten absolutely clobbered, right? 220, the share price, all the way down to 165. That's literally a 60, not a 60, a 35% drop in price over the past literally couple of weeks. And if we're noticing here on the three year, one week chart, we're noticing that we're actually at a level of support that we haven't been at since 
uh, the October month of 2016. So it's literally been about... I'd say two and a half years, give or take, since we were at these levels for 3M. So this is actually a very interesting spot. You know, are we going to end up holding this level here on the long-term charts right now? We're not really seeing consolidation. We're not really seeing a green candlestick in sight. So it's not confirmed. It has not been confirmed quite yet. But this week, in my opinion, is going to tell us whether or not we're going to hold this level, right? If we don't hold this level, if we look on the 20-year chart, going back even more, we notice the next level that we may be going to may be near $160, right? You guys see this drawn out right here. Let's say we break $160, we may be going down all the way to $138, but in my opinion, that is the absolute worst case scenario. So keep an eye on 3M to hold the roughly 160 level. And from here, guys, we may be going on a rally since 3M, again, the shares have been absolutely clobbered. And here on a shorter term basis on the 184 hour chart, we are noticing some consolidation here, but we did have a bit of a dip on, I believe, was it Thursday or Friday of last week? We dipped down a bit more. We had that big pop on, uh, what day was this? This was earlier last week. We had that big pop into the 170s. Then we ended up selling off a bit more. So honestly, guys, if you're looking to swing trade 3M at this point, you know, all I'm waiting for is a 50 SMA resistance break here on the 184 hour chart, ideally into the 170s and ideally out of the 172, 173 level. Because at this point, if we do get to 172, we'll be out of the 50 SMA and we'll be out of this old support, which is a resistance. And that's going to be two resistance breaks. Very, very good sign for 3M. So at this point, I'm just sitting here waiting and I'm also contemplating starting a long-term position here on 3M. At this point in time, the starting yield is about 3.5%. And you may be asking yourself, how do you find starting yield? You know, at this point, on Yahoo Finance, the dividend for 3M, it's not accurate, guys. All you need to do to find the yield, the dividend of a certain company is take the dividend for the year. If I remember correctly, it's about $3 or something, $3.30. It doesn't really matter, but take the dividend for the year. Let's say it's $4 and divide it by the share price and multiply that by 100. So in this case, let's say the dividend for 3M is $4. Take $4 divided by $166. You'll get a decimal, like a point, uh, point oh three or something like that, 0 0.03. Multiply that by 100, and it'll give you a percentage at around 3. 3, 3.5, 3.6, somewhere around there. And that is what your dividend yield is. And just remember, a lot of these sites that you're looking at, Yahoo Finance, you know, CNN, you know, investing.com, you know, your private, you know, brokerage, whatever you're looking at, they don't update the dividends right away, right? It might take them a little bit, like a day, two days, which is why I just like to do that calculation I just showed you guys. It makes it much easier and you get the accurate dividend of what it is at that moment in time, right? Which is super, super important. So let's talk about a couple that you guys actually ended up shouting out here and some more that I'm personally watching. So one is Z, ticker symbol Z, Zillow Group. For those of you guys that don't know, uh, Zillow Group is a uh, website for for real estate. I'm not too, you know, into um, this type of a uh, uh, business, this niche. I don't know too much about it, but that's the gist of what this business uh, is. If we're breaking down the technicals here on ticker symbol Z, we can see earnings report came a couple of weeks ago. Not too sure. Seems like they had a negative here. Not too sure if. Uh, their earnings were good or not, but we can see the pop, the sell-off right after earnings, and the steady climb. So that's a pretty good sign, in my opinion, post-earnings right there. We're noticing right now, you know, this is actually a really good example right here. We're noticing 
the resistance on Zillow right here, very strong resistance actually, at about 41 to 42 dollars. We saw that was a resistance from back in October to the early month of uh, November. We see there was like four different resistance tops at that point we had trouble getting above the levels there sold off we popped out of it briefly sold off again and now we're retesting this level so i'm actually really happy i believe who shouted this one out i think it was julissa if i'm saying your name right thanks for shouting this one out by the way if you are watching and this one i think it's going to be a pretty good play if we break out if we break out of here this could be a really good play from 42 dollars up to 45 ish dollars right we can notice that's easily about six seven percent we notice it's kind of what it did a couple of months ago. We popped out, we we ran for a day or two, then we ended up selling off. So just keep an eye for that pop. If we're trending up pre-market hours tomorrow, let's say we're in the 42s, maybe low 42s, let's say 42.30, that's going to be a good sign for a possibly good run on Z over the next couple of days. So thank you for that call out. Z is looking pretty, pretty solid. So another one I want to talk about in today's video is at V Activision Blizzard. And for those of you guys that have been paying attention to the gaming, um, Stocks, right? The gaming stocks, you know, EA, uh, TTWO, uh, ATVI. These are just stocks, and I'll pull them up for you guys right now. Take two, you know, this one's actually reversing, but still it's been clobbered. EA, I think EA has been doing pretty decent or had a decent day. Yup, it's had a decent day, sold off, but nonetheless, it's still getting clobbered in ATVI. You know, all these video game stocks, they've just been getting killed over the past couple of months. And it seems like from what I'm seeing based off my naked eye right now, AtV has been doing the absolute worst out of all of these stocks. And we're noticing how ever since they reported earnings, they've been selling off pretty aggressively. We were near 47 dollars per share right around earnings and now we're trading almost to the low 40s we're actually we actually are at the low 40s at about 42 dollars and 29 cents at the close from this past friday and we're actually inching towards the next support which if we break this one, guys, honestly, that's not going to be too good for AtV at that point. We're going to be at lows here on the 184-hour chart, and that may bring in some more bears, some more short sellers, some more downside for the stock, to be honest. And we can notice here over the past couple of months, you know, we did hold 40 once, twice, three times, four times. It's a pretty strong support. You can see we broke 43 last week. And, you know, we have about $2 left to go to that support level. So I'd wait and see, you know, are we going to hold $40 again? And from there, we could potentially go on this little run, maybe back up to the moving averages here. Notice how, you know, the last time at V got to a low, the last time the RSI was oversold like it is now, we went on a run from $43 up to $46. That's at least, you know, a couple percentage points. That would be a very good trade. Let's see how much it actually is uh, to, to put an exact number on it. It's about 7 8%. So I'm thinking something very similar to that might happen here. We might bottom out at $40, $41, and we might make a run back up to the moving average resistance, which in this case is going to be the 50 SMA. So let's say you know, we get down to $41. You know, if we run back up to the 50 SMA resistance, that might be another 5, 6, 7% margin for ATV. So I'm really liking it. The RSI is oversold. We just need to find a bottom and we need to find that reversal, that spike up, so we can just capitalize on the pushback. So let's say, again, if we break $40, if we start to trend down to the 39s, the 38s, that's not going to be looking too good, but eventually we're going to see that pop up on AtV. We're going to see a couple of days where we're running up. We just have to catch it at the right time, and I am watching it You know, for this upcoming week, no doubt about it. So AAL, 
American Airlines. I have my notepad here if you guys are seeing me looking to the side. Yes, I have a notepad with a couple of notes, some stocks that I'm watching. Again, some that you guys ended up calling out. AAL is actually one that I got on the Instagram DM. So if you're watching this, whoever uh, uh, DM me on Instagram, I appreciate, again, the call out. So AAL, American Airlines. This is one that reported earnings from what I'm seeing here, 52 cents. Okay, so they missed on EPS from what I'm seeing here. Okay, maybe that's why the stock's been tumbling. And to be honest, just from what I'm seeing, you know, this is a stock that it's like a falling knife at this point. It's kind of like 3M. There's no reversal quite yet. There's no bottom quite yet. And we're kind of reaching supports from a couple of months ago. It's kind of like exactly like 3M in a sense. And if we're just drawing out the support, you know, we broke a very critical support level just this past week or the week before that. We can see the 20, what was that? $30, $30, $30. We literally had a double bottom at 30. We had a one, two, three bottom <coughs> here in the beginning of 2019 at $30. We had a bottom at $30 again towards the end of March. And now we almost bottom at $30, but we broke right below it. So on a technical basis, that's not too good of a sign on AAL. We're noticing the RSI is very oversold. At this point in time, for me to even get into AAL, I need to see it back in the $30 range. We need to see a pop up above $30. We need to see a break out of the old support, which is now a resistance again at $30. And from there, we may be seeing another run, right? And notice how over the long run here on the 184 hour, AAL is on a descending pattern of lower highs and lower lows, guys. There's no uh, denying that this one's in a downwards pattern. $44 high, next high at $40, next high at $36, next high $34. And this low is about to crack below the $28 low from uh, a couple of months ago. And that's just, again, the confirmation of the descending pattern. So maybe once we find a bottom, this is actually kind of like at V as well, right? Once we find that bottom, we may, excuse me, go on that run where we may pop up like 10% to get back to the moving average resistances. Because notice, just like at V, the 50 SMA here is acting as a resistance. That could be a very viable play if we do pop and break the $30 level and maybe run up to that 50 SMA, we may be grabbing some good margin if that does end up happening. So I'm going to be watching that one. Thanks for the call out, AAL. Next one I want to talk about is RKUNY. So RKUNY, this one is kind of looking like a pretty good uptrending pattern, honestly, guys. We're noticing it's riding the 50 SMA, or it was riding the 50 SMA, rather. We broke that level at about 1050. Now we're trending down to about 975, or we did, rather, where we ended up holding an old resistance as a support. That's a pretty good sign. We've also broken above the 1015 level of resistance from back in the beginning of April in 2019. So very good sign there. Now, all I would want to see very basic guys you know stocks that look like this that are uptrending that are on the pullback they're kind of easy to analyze right at this point you know we're noticing the spike on the RSI we're noticing how we're fighting that 50 SMA resistance all I would want to see here is a break into let's say ten dollars and fifty cents ten sixty maybe ten seventy and for us to break the 50 SMA on this longer 184 hour chart at that point in time you know, from 1070 up to 1130, that's around a five, six, seven percent margin of profit. So not too hard to, you know, break these down. In my opinion, this one's looking pretty good. If we're looking back on the three year one week chart, something that is a bit concerning here is that it is, uh, you know, this could be a lower high from the previous. So we would need to see a pop here and a potential continuation of the uptrend. We wouldn't want to get caught in this little bull trap here. Let's say we ended up popping a bit and we got and we actually got rejected by that 180 
S or the 50 SMA here on the 184 hour chart. At that point, we'd be selling off here on the longer term chart, on the three year chart, and that would just simply be the continuation of this lower high descending pattern that we do see on the longer term chart. So I'd be careful with this one. You know, it is important a lot to look at longer term charts, and by longer, I mean the three year, the one year. And of course, the 180 when you're looking at potentially swinging, swing trading some stocks, right? Notice how I looked at the three-year chart on 3M. It's very, very important to understand where the stock has been on in the past three, four, five years, right? So let's take a look at Aurora Cannabis very quickly, ACB. And the cannabis stocks have actually been kind of quiet lately, honestly, guys. Remember when Cron, you know, CGC, they were going crazy a couple of months ago. They've kind of been quiet since that peak towards the beginning or more towards the, uh, you know, the end of March in 2019 for ACB in specific here. And what I'm noticing is, you know, ACB... Very basic here, you know, it's been descending over the past three months since that nice run that we saw in the first couple of months of 2019, right? We notice the high at about 1040, the next high is at about 940, and it's just been making lower highs ever since then. Now we're noticing that it made a bearish cross, the 50 SMA crossed below the 180 SMA a couple of weeks ago, and since then, guys, it's been downtrending. We noticed the, the, the 180 SMA, it's been acting as a resistance here. We dropped even further last week. If we see the five-day, five-minute, you know, it's just been ugly pretty much, descending, lower lows, lower highs, all that jazz for ACB. And honestly, until we break out of these moving average resistances, the 180 and the 50 SMA, you know, I'm not really interested in, <clears throat> excuse me, in trading ACB, right? But if we do get potentially a bullish cross of the 50 SMA crossing above to the upside here of the 180 SMA, which I'm personally watching for, and we get the candlesticks to break out, you know, that could be a huge breakout to the upside, and we may be running back up. And guys, never ever take your eyes off the cannabis stocks. These are ones that I track every single week, even if I don't talk about them in the video, guys. That doesn't mean I'm not watching them. I'm personally watching them not every day. Some days I miss them, I'm not going to lie. But most of the days throughout the week, you know, three, four days a week, I am watching the cannabis stocks. And we notice, you know, on the 180 chart, now, now that I'm seeing this, let me point this out, you know, ACB is getting towards a support that was an old resistance from a couple of months ago. We noticed the top here, beginning of November, top here, beginning of February. Keep an eye, this may be the bouncing level. This may be the bouncing zone for ACB. If we get down another 20, 30 cents, bring that RSI down a bit more, we hold this support. We may be popping here, guys. This may be a spot where we do end up shooting up on ACB, which is what I'm personally watching. So let's talk about very quickly Facebook and Apple. These are two that were also requested. But again, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, guys, these large cap stocks, they've been absolutely brutalized, right? Apple, it's not looking too great here. You know, the, bull, the bearish cross, 50 SMA crossing below the 180 SMA. We're not really finding a bottom. Lower lows, lower highs. We're in the 170s now. I'm not really looking to trade Apple quite yet. Maybe start adding more to my long position if we get into the 150s. I know that's a long way out from now, but at the at this point, guys, with the trade war, China, sales are dropping in China for iPhone, the stock may be going lower. So the support that I'm watching for is 175. This could be a spot where we might hold. If we don't hold, we may be selling off further, but all you need to know is that Apple has been getting smashed, you know, during this whole trade war dilemma between the U.S. and China, guys. And the tariffs, they've been absolutely crucifying Apple stock here. And <clears throat> me personally, I'm bearish on Apple stock right now in the short term. And by short term, I mean three, six months. For, for the long term, I'm absolutely bullish on Apple. I own this one in my long term portfolio. I believe in it a lot for the long term, but right now, short term, I'm bearish on Apple, which brings me to Facebook, guys. 
Facebook doesn't have exposure to China, but it is still getting clobbered by this whole trade war. Everything that's been going on in the global economy recently, it's been getting clobbered. Not as bad as Apple, but still $200 per share a couple of weeks ago. Now it's at $180. We're noticing the start of the bearish cross here. We're noticing moving averages are acting as resistances. We may be heading lower here in terms of Facebook, guys. So keep an eye on 178 179 roughly that level of support. We're nearing that level. If we break that, you know, that's a huge break on Facebook. We may be going down to 175. So I'm going to end off the video here. If you all enjoyed this video, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. Feel free to drop a comment. Let me know what you guys think about these stocks. What are you guys doing this upcoming week? I would love to know. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you're, and hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time that I do make a video. And also, I uploaded a video on Saturday morning talking about how much money I started trading with when I first started trading a couple years back. So go check out that video. You'll probably see it right here, um, you know, in the cards or the pop-up video that shows up towards the end of the video. So go click on that. Watch that. Let me know what you guys think. I'll catch you all in the next video. Good luck. Peace out.